And let's get into it. Let's talk realness. Let's talk about what really went down. Shall we? <laughs> Between MC8 and DJ Quick, one of the, at that time, that was like the, the biggest beefs that we knew in hip hop that existed. At that point, it was like the West Coast hip hop battle, and it was like Blood Crips. Because when it first came out, DJ Quick, when he came out in the underground, he was like, okay. He made all these underground tapes. Everybody was like, okay, the red tape and all this stuff. And everybody thought that he was dissing MC8 and Cop the Most Wanted on the song Real Though. But you got to make your own, you know, decision about that. And I think it's probably on YouTube. I don't think he was dissing, to be honest. I really don't. But even though that didn't res that didn't mark any response from Compton Most Wanted. But if you listen to Death Wish, but he was like biting me sick so you can get the duck sick quick. He, he said he wasn't even dissing quick. So, that was it. But Shabba Glue and all them dudes that was with Quick at the time or was, was like, man, dude, like, count the most wanted. Like, what's going on with you and them? And he was like, what are you talking about? And Quick was working on uh, Way Too Funky Out. He had already did Just Like Compton. And he was like, dude, like, I, they, they think I'm dissing him? Like, he was shocked. And then he heard the song, and everybody, like, came back, and you know how it is when, like, two, three people come back, like, man, they dissing quick. So, he was in the middle of producing his songs. He had this, did, just like Compton, he was finishing the rest of the album. So, way too funky, he made that made that uh, shout out at the end he was like uh, oh no that was at the end but on way too funky he was like he was like uh, he was like but the fool to the suckers in my city claiming I got a death wish you could try again, fool. You ain't hitting near this. Them whack ass tracks make you sound like a monkey. Just a shot in the dark from a punk ass mark who ain't funky. So, of course, everybody knew what he was talking about then. You know, and then they doing like the blood step in the video. You know, it's totally, totally disrespectful to MC8, who's basically known as a crit. So when they did the hood and took me under the Compton's Most Wanted video, they had a card cardboard cutout of DJ Quick <laughs> in there. And I was like, oh man, it's on now. So they did a uh, DJ Premier Primo did a uh, they did a uh, remix of the song uh, Death Wish Two, the remix. When he was calling Quick, talking about DJ Quick Perm, DJ Quick, <laughs> they had a guy with the Compton jacket like he had in, uh, what was that, uh, Just Like Compton, and on the cover, so chasing him all through Compton, and man, it was like, immediately the beef was on, so when that happened, but oh yeah, I forgot too at the at the outro. I never told you what he said. When he gave shouts out, DJ Quickhead gave shouts out to everybody on the album except for a one hit having a dude from CMW <laughs> on the outro. Called him simple minded and everything. And 
after this, DJ Quick did not put out a response song because he did not want to get into an escalated beef with MC8 with this drama. He, he thought it was just going to die out. Plus, he was having problems with his label. He was like, look, the label is doing this, the label is doing that. He's trying to get away from his uh, label at the time. Because he was working on the Second to None album and he had AMG. So he was working with uh, a couple of these artists and he he was putting his projects on hold. So the only time he was dissing M MC8 was at the Jack the Rapper event they had, had earlier. They had this Jack the Rapper event where all the rappers go out there and promote themselves and meet the public and all that stuff. So he was dissing MC8 like all through the thing and they was... Man, this dude with the sloppy Jerry Curl and dissing him in the magazine. One putting out records was just dissing him in the magazine was like, yeah, and that whack album he put out was, you know, like nobody, nobody's going to buy it. So MC8 was coming solo, featuring, featuring CMW. Now, see, at this point, MC8 as a solo artist really wasn't like known. He was just in CMW. But this time he comes out. And he comes out with Death Wish 3. A much harder disc record. And more complete disc record for Quick. And when Death Wish 3 came out and the MC8 success, now 8 is known as a solo artist. Now, now he's MC8. And the album was a smash. So what happened was, Quick was like, man, this dude just came at me hard. And DJ Quick is not a diss rapper. He's really not. This is not really what he want to do. So he wants to produce and makes music and make songs. So he's sitting there trying to think of how he finna write this rap to come back. But he still got label problems. So while he's sitting on the shelf... Try to figure out what direction his label is going in or his contract. He runs in the shoe night. DJ Quick at this point is like flat broke. Like MC8. What's his name? Uh, not MC8, but uh, AMG left. Uh, Second and None was still down with him. But everybody else had left you know I mean like AMG left and they were supposed to do these shows and he just bailed he got a contract and just bailed out on people so quick had to deal with that situation more than the MCA because that was more of a personal situation when everybody needs to stay together stay in circle so they can get a new deal he got his own single deal and broke out when he was living with dudes you know he was like living with them imagine somebody in your house living with you eating off you and everything else, then when they get a check, they just bounce. And they don't even say, here, take this. And it was just, it was a bad situation. So he was dealing with that more than anything with MC8. And one of his homies, one of his little uh, blood homies, G1, was writing songs for Quick at the time. So, trying to help him finish an album because he was working on a deal where Suge was going to try to bring him over to death row. And Suge offered him so much money, cause he keeping it real, keeping it real. So he was like, boom, getting him so much money up front, like here, bam, you with me. And man, he was he was safe, basically safe and sound. So that's when the album came out, and on the Murder Was the Case soundtrack, he put dollars and cents on it. Like at the Source Awards, nobody knew Quick was going to do that song. Because at the sound check, he didn't even do that. He did another song. He didn't do Dollars and Cent. So it was, it was entirely a shock. But he did it on the big stage and he did it live. And Dollars and Cents was like, hmm, this is... 
Quick put his flavor to it, but you can tell G1 wrote the song. And I said, well, G1, G1 wrote the song because you can tell that if you can listen to DJ Quick music and you listen to Dollars and Cents, it's a little bit different. Because this is more detailed, like going into his history or and all this stuff, but it was completely a great disc record. And it had DJ Quick's like party like feel vibe to it, the funk, which he likes to vibe off of. So it was a catchy song. It was really too precise. That line about you spelled your name wrong, you left out the G because the G ain't in you, was the biggest punchline of the record. And it, it led to uh, a lot of success for DJ Quick. By him doing that song and not making another one. Because he made another one. It was never released. But it was never the way it was supposed to be done. Because it was so much like drama going on. Y'all just don't even know. Because Quick, no Crips was buying DJ Quick's record. If you was a Crip, you wasn't buying Quick's record. If you was a blood, you was not buying CMW. That's just what it was. And it was sad because they had great songs that they didn't get the mass appeal that they would have by doing such things like that. You put yourself in a box and now a crip can't buy your record. He can't. He can't. He can't buy your record. If he get caught with your record, you know what probably happened to him? So crips can't buy your records. And now your market is gone. And DJ Quick was making all them songs back then, but he was really broke. Like, he had, like, no money. And basically came to DJ, I mean, not DJ, but Suge Knight with his hat in hand. That's how bad things got at his label. He had to cancel all these shows. And that's what MC8 was bragging on at the time. Like, we the reason that you canceled all of your shows. Strictly for my niggas, so up you hope. So, at that time, MCA and Pac was cool. And that's what was weird, that when Pac got out, you know, he was really, you know, went with Death Row and the Bloods. But he was cool, Pac was cool with anybody at that time. But when he got out and joined Death Row, he didn't really speak to 8 like that no more, but... Eight was his guy. More than DJ Quick. But Dazzy D, uh, he was the one that was trying to get them to come together. Because they was like, look, man, enough of this. This is crazy. You know, we need to get back to you know, doing things the right way. And he was right. I mean if they if they if those two come together, man, that was a blessing because that that show the Crip and Blood could do their thing and still be cool. Like there's no problems. Why are we gonna kill ourselves and or kill our money and success and put ourselves in a box when we just really want to make music so everybody can chill with it. And I mean, they partied at the same places together. They've been in the same presence of each other. And they've actually been home. So, once DJ Quick put it out on wax, like, man, let's just squash it. Because after the Death Wish 4 song came out on the, on that, uh, what's that, uh, Death Threats album, that was it. It didn't, it didn't have the same impact as Dollars and Cents. So it was just time to end the beat, you know, so. I think, uh, that's about it. That's about what covered the whole drama with that. Because...
That if that was really this just shows you how misunderstanding can go a long way and how people could put a battery in your back. So when Quick got Dazzy got involved and he helped broker this whole thing with the peace talks and so I give him a lot of credit for that. But as you can see, it's a lot better now that both people are still alive and everything else. There's a lot of people getting beat down over this DJ Quick MC8 beef. A lot of people went to jail, hospital visits, the whole nine. So that just shows you it's more than just two people.